Hold on, back that up. That definitely wasn't the first time dropping that. So why am I drop testing a bag full of bricks? So I remember the first time I went big walling, the last pitch, the feeling in my stomach when I let the bag swing over because the pitch went off to the side and when he starts hauling, it's gonna go over that way. Most of the time you can lower the bag by using the extra end of your haul line or the extra end of your line that you're going to ascend. But we didn't, we just let it go. And oh, just like all my food, water, gear and stuff is in that bag. And I'm just like, I don't know how strong the bag is. Another thing we do that, I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not, is the number one rule when rope jumping is to always go second. And so we'll fill this bag full of literally rocks and we'll huck it off a cliff to make sure that the trajectory is right. If we can get 200 pounds in there, then we know that the stretch and the rope isn't gonna make us hit the ground when we take a fall. But you probably shouldn't be rope swinging that close to the ground that if the rope stretches, you'd hit it. So when you huck a bag of rocks off a cliff, it makes you wonder, how strong's that bag? So we started with 120 pounds of bricks. Did not break that. I don't know how I'm gonna break that. Now 11.80 kilonewtons would wreck you if you took that whipper, but the bag seemed to hold up just fine. I just threw in probably another 30, 40 pounds. Nothing broke. <laughs> like what am I supposed to put in there to make this thing break? We got a higher force at 15.76. So I added a hundred more pounds. So now the total weight is 275 pounds, but it didn't break where you think it broke. Oh, that's a lot of... You get a bonus test. How strong is a cross-loaded carabiner? 9.9, .9, in case you were wondering. What's in the red bag, you ask? Well, I'm so tired of having my line scale threes busted when we do these tests that I wanted to super pad it. This uh, hard foam section, did do its job because this we sandwich around the thing before closing it for a final amount line scale is fine got 9.9 .9 kilonewtons on this thing but this isn't attached to anything it, because uh this used to be on there and the sling was attached to this and i want this to break before the line scale gets above 30 i don't ever want to take this above 30 but um if this got cross loaded then it probably broke it 10. We'll find out if the gate's inside of here. That worked out. All right, so the bottom is starting to blow out. You can see the condition of it's pretty bad. And that might be from what we're doing right now. But this was looking pretty gnarly before we even started. That did look like this before I started. So it doesn't seem like the straps are, I don't know, doing badly for what they're going through. But you also have a loop which is twice as strong and four sewing points here taking the load. It's the bottom that's catching the bricks. Oh! Metal diarrhea! Oh. Blew its guts out. That's cool. I've always wondered what would happen if that's what happened. This is a Metolius bag. They're all made a little different. 12.94 was the fourth time we dropped that. Almost 13 kilonewtons isn't that bad considering we did this four times. Now I thought the straps were going to fail even a little bit and they didn't. So we took it over to the slow pull machine to make sure they did. All right, so I clipped one strap of this haul bag to this side and I clipped, just this loop already came undone, this gnarlyed up loop um, to this side. A little bit stronger. Haha, -ha, sick. Eight. Almost a thousand pounds of force. I've always wondered what those straps broke at. And since this one's broken, I'm just gonna pull on this main one. It already has that fray in it, but I doubt that's where it would break. So the stitching breaks when that gets pulled like that. But if this thing's super full and docked to that guy, and then you step on the bag and there's any sort of a jerk on it, I wonder if that would just come undone. Let's pull on the straps and pull them apart like that.
sick. Ah, stitching held. Very interesting how this is put together. Okay, so I started to delaminate that from this part here. So all these parts ended up being more bomber than I thought. However, if you're gonna connect your bag with a, a docking system, let's say you take this rope and you're gonna tie a bunch of mule overhand, which you can see in the Big Wall Bible, which we're always improving and adding to, just like this video, we're gonna to add to that and keep writing in it. We have a whole 14 video Big Wall series. But this little tip I think is helpful because it's relevant to what we just pulled. This yellow strap right here, uh, some people will connect this rope here and then you'll dock it with a muncher mule overhand. They'll connect it to this yellow strap, just like this. But instead, I actually think it'd be nice if you went around the backside here to where it's still in the yellow strap, but if the yellow strap were to fail for whatever reason, let's say you had a really heavy bag and you're stepping on it and it shifted, then at least you're connected to the strap, which is, as we saw, super bomber. Because if this thing falls off El Capitan, ooh, that would be really bad. You're probably gonna kill somebody. And you dropped all your stuff. Now we're also working on an entire rope jumping series and something I wanna disclaim about throwing a bag of rocks sounds as, it's as bad as it sounds. You gotta make sure nobody's under you. If you can get a 200 pound load dropped, which that's preferred, you still gotta haul it up. It's kind of a lot of work, but at least if you're gonna be dropping stuff that heavy, we ended up on the Leaning Tower Dan Osman rope swing that we did, we ended up double bagging it. So we had a medium haul bag inside of the large haul bag and then equalized all four straps. Pretty bomber considering I think we only had about 120 pounds in that bag, but potentially people could be down there because it's a place people are. And so we had scouts and made sure no one was on there, no one was on the route, and we thoughtfully tossed a bag off the cliff. You don't know what you don't know when you go rope jumping. And it's nice to have some sort of a dummy that you're tossing before you, the dummy, jump off a cliff. Now I hate to feel like I have to say this, but sometimes your portal edge is below the haul bag, which you can see why in the big wall course. Uh, but underneath here is the straps in order to connect other haul bags, poop tubes, portal edges, whatever. Don't um, clip yourself to that. Well, why would anybody do that? Well, it's like right here when you're standing on a portal, you can, like clip a personal anchor to it. Just don't make it the only thing or at all the thing that's holding your life. And you might think it's silly to even have to mention that until I got this photo from Jeremiah that uh, people actually made an anchor out of it. And a tip when anchor shaving, try to be really nice when you're gonna tell someone they're likely to die because they're more likely to listen to you. And thank you to those who do make this possible because I am a nerd and I love discovering these things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to find on the internet. Now, based on the feedback we got, one of the most helpful videos that we have is the 14th video of the Big Wall series, where we show you A to Z of us doing a pitch, including the hauling. And you can go check that out next.